Hello. In this video, we're going to go through and derive the cosine law, a very useful law which can be applied to non right angle triangles. So, to start with, we've drawn a triangle here in the top right hand side of the screen. We've labeled the vertices A, B, C. And from that, we can then say that the lengths are named A, B, C. And I'm just going to, kind of, for purposes you'll see in a moment, show the C as the entire length from there. So, just like with the sine law, we start, our thinking can start from the point that this is not a right angle triangle, and therefore we can't apply the primary trig ratios to it. So what we do is force a right angle triangle by dropping a perpendicular straight down. We're going to go from vertex C to point C, and now we have a right angle triangle. Now, we called this length H, and this was convenient when we were deriving the sine law because sine is defined as the opposite over the hypotenuse, which was h over b. But with cosine law, we're going to use cosine to, to prove, to, we're going to use the cosine primary trig ratio, and the adjacent is, is this length from here to here, which we don't know how long that is. So what we're going to do is we're going to do another little trick here, and we're going to break up the base of this triangle into two parts. I'm going to go the part from a and we're going to put a value of d here. So we're going to put the length ADx. And therefore, I can say the length db is c minus x. This is a useful technique when working through some more tricky questions. So what can we then say? Well, we can start by pulling out a couple, couple ideas from this. So the first thing that we can say is we can say that b squared is equal to h squared plus x squared. Right? And that's from the Pythagoras theorem here looking at triangle ACD. <clears throat> the next thing I can say is I can say that x over b is equal to cos a. And so therefore I'm going to isolate for x and say x is b cos a. Remember, one of the ideas here is that we've introduced these new unknowns, that is h and x, but when we're done, we don't want to use h and x at all. We want it to be able to figure out properties of this triangle given only its angles or length of sides. So now we're going to focus on triangle BDC. So let's focus on that one. And a starting point for this one would be that we can say that a squared is equal to h squared plus c minus x squared. And that's simply using Pythagoras' theorem and looking at this triangle here. So now that I have this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a second and I'm going to expand the binomial there. So h squared plus, and just to write an extra step here, we'll say c minus x times c minus x. Make that look a little nicer. Which is, so therefore a squared is equal to h squared plus c squared minus 2cx plus x squared. And now I'm going to take a second and rearrange this. I'm going to rewrite it in this form. I'm going to take the x squared and bring it around to the front. So x squared plus h squared plus c squared minus 2cx. So now what we want to do is we're starting to look a little bit like something useful. We need to get rid of this x squared, we need to get rid of this h squared, we need to get rid of this x. And that's where we go up and we, we use these two relationships we figured out earlier. So let's start with the x squared here. Well, I can rearrange equation one, and I can say that x squared is equal to b squared minus h squared, which is nice. And so now, if I come down into my 
current working space, I can say a squared is equal to, and instead of x squared, I'm going to say, instead of x squared, I'm going to put b squared minus h squared. And then this is plus h squared plus c squared minus 2cx. And what I notice now is that the h squareds, if I have minus h squared and plus h squared, they cancel out. So I end up with a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2c. Now, I'm not going to draw the x in yet. Let's just take a look. If we look here, we have the x here. And if I go up top, we see that x is equal to b cos a. So I'm going to rewrite x. And instead of putting x, I'm going to put b cos a. And what I've now done is made related a squared to b squared, c squared, and cos of a. So this is the cosine law. And there it is there. So what we can think about here is we can say that if I take my triangle, and let's erase the x and all those values here. And let's assume that we don't know the height. So now I'm given this triangle. See? If I'm given B, C, and angle A, I can then solve for length A. Because see here we have B squared, C squared, there's B and C, and there's angle A. And what people often remember when they're using the cosine law is that the cosine law is used in side angle side situations. So notice here, we have a side, we have an angle, and we have a side. And that's the situation that we use cosine law. And in our case, we've derived it simply for a squared. And we know that a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. And if you make the observation that the other two lengths are used and the same angle as the side you're solving, we can extend this to say b squared is equal to a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cos of b. And finally, we can say c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2b, sorry, minus 2ab cos c. And that is how we prove or derive the cosine law. Hope that helped.